Lynn Hiles Ministries presents Dr. Lynn Hiles, That You Might Have Life. And here's your host, Dr. Lynn Hiles. I want to welcome you back to the program again this week, and thank you for joining us again on the program. Uh, We're headed up towards Thanksgiving, and we just wanted to talk a little bit about the power of Thanksgiving and some of the things that I think would be important, uh, you know, uh, even in this season as we come to this time of Thanksgiving. And uh, my oldest son, Jeremy, is on the program with me. Mm -hmm. And over the last eight weeks, we filmed a series on the book of Joshua that you can go back and watch at your leisure on our YouTube channel. Uh, Everything that we air to date has been archived there. You can go back and watch it at no cost to you. If you subscribe to the channel, it will tell you every time we upload a new program, which we do on a weekly basis. We also upload the audio portions of this to our uh, podcast and to an RSS feed so you can listen to the audio portions of this. But we've been talking about uh, entering into the promised land and what that means in light of a new covenant perspective. And so, you know, as I've thought about the quality of life that the gospel has brought to us Mm -hmm. and the peace and the joy and the living outside of the condemnation and bondage, it's almost to me a foreign concept as I keep looking at people's lives and I forget that they don't understand some of the things that we understand. And I almost look at them and think, oh man, I just feel bad for you that you're just not able to enjoy the journey. Yeah. You know, our friend Scotty Todd, who went on to be with the Lord many years ago, that was his favorite thing to say is, I'm enjoying the journey. And I'm I'm telling you, it truly does get sweeter Mm -hmm. and sweeter as the days go by. And the quality of life that's brought to our families, we were talking, you and I, a little bit before uh, when we were not on camera about the legacy that's been handed to us, you know, from my great-grandma and my grandmother, but especially my mom and dad, Mm -hmm. you know, who have both gone on to be with the Lord patriarch and matriarch of our family, that the one thing they gave us as a heritage was a, not not so much physical things as it was spiritual things, that Jesus Mm -hmm. was the center of what gave us the quality of life that we have. I mean, I can remember our lives before Jesus came on the scene. And so, you know, I, you know, at this, especially as this Thanksgiving period comes, I think that I start thinking about family. And I start thinking about the legacy Mm -hmm. and I start thinking about, you know, the blessing that it was to be raised in a family like that. Now, I realize everybody hadn't had that opportunity, but, you know, I sometimes get concerned. And, you know, I said this to you earlier that I sometimes get concerned that there's, you know, there's a number of us in the house family. My dad had seven children, so we multiplied pretty good. There's probably, I I lost count, maybe Mm -hmm. somewhere around 60 of us now, as far as kids, grandkids, great grandkids. But I worry sometimes that as these generations, you know, kind of go on down Mm -hmm. through the line, that they forget what it was that brought us the tight knitness and the closeness of the inheritance and heritage. And I think we really are living in a season right now, especially with the culture that we've got, all this, you know, cancel culture and people offended about everything, is that there almost seems like a spirit of offense that has been released. But I believe God wants to renew our families. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we need to just kind of, you know, not be offended by every little thing that comes down the pike to the point where families get easily, I I just started realizing at some point, listen, while I'm not very devil conscious at all, sometimes I think there's a spirit of offense that's been released to try to get people to divide and separate. And what a better time than Thanksgiving than Mm -hmm. to go you know, go back to, um, you know, maybe the, the dinner table and stop fighting over every little issue. You know, I mean, it, it is a difficult time to pastor. It's a difficult time to lead because, you know, if you do this, you you know, people are mad. If you don't do it, they're mad. You know, it's like it's we have just been pitted at us against them to the point where I think it's time maybe for a little bit of, of, uh, of enjoyment. And I was thinking, you know, even when the pilgrims came over here, you know, I watched a, some some historic videos about it. That literally, they left, they left Europe because of the oppression of religion. Mm-hmm. They, it, the king was the head of the church, and I think we need to remember that because even as a, a kingdom preacher, that I believe in the kingdom, and I believe that God wants to, the kingdom of, of God is going to fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. We want to be careful that we don't start to think that the kingdom is going to come through legislative powers. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I do believe that when the righteous reign, the people rejoice and politics are important in their place, but the kingdom of God exists in any culture under any shade tree anywhere in the world, the kingdom of God, it transcends all of that and is alive and well all over this planet. And I think that if you think the kingdom can be legislated, you're going to miss the point because mm -hmm. if you could legislate the kingdom, then Moses had the best laws there was, but the people couldn't keep them. So the kingdom has to be in the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, the scripture even says the kingdom of God is within you. Yeah. And if you, if, when you wake up to that kind of reality of the kingdom of God is within you, doesn't matter what's happening around sometimes, you know, because we can get, like we get, a lot of Christians even get really moved by what's happening in the news and what's happening in the world. Yeah. You know, and if it's not, you know, because like you said, it, we we want it, we think it comes through legislation. So if our, the guy we think should have been in the White House is not there, you know, then we think, well, this is, you know, this is the judgment of God coming and this is just, you know, we better pray and get, you know, fast and all this. But the thing is for me, I'm never moved by who's in the White House. I, you know, I vote my conscience. I, I believe in those things. I believe in, in my civic duty and those things. But when I wake up the next day, you know, after election day, if the guy I voted for is not the president or the girl I voted for is not the president, I'm not moved by that because that's not where the kingdom comes. The kingdom of God is within me. And so my life still goes on living the joys of the kingdom. You know, yeah. like I'm still living in heaven. It's still, you know, my, my family's still healthy. My, there are still things that are, the good life is still happening in my home. And that's the difference, I think, between, you know, when we think about like, well, we got to legislate the kingdom rather than realizing the kingdom of God is within us, is that when that, when the kingdom, when you know the kingdom of God is within you, the kingdom is this, the scripture says, not meat or drink, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. And those things are located in the Holy Ghost. And when you talk, the kingdom of God being within me, it means whenever all the stuff, you know, the reason why Jesus could sleep in a boat is because the kingdom of God was in him. In the midst of a, the reason he could sleep in a boat in the midst of a storm is because the kingdom of God was in him. He was at peace. He was he was having joy. He was with his disciples. He he knew he was righteous. And so there was just a peace to be able to go down there and sleep in the middle of that boat. The disciples hadn't yet received that kingdom yet. Yeah. And that's why they were so moved by the storm and what was happening in the boat. And they say, Jesus, don't you care that we perish? And I think that that's where some people are. They're, they're screaming, don't you care that we, they're, they're, they're waiting for Jesus to come back because don't you care that we perish? But that's not, you. when you're in that kind of mind state, you haven't let the kingdom of God be within you yet. Because when the kingdom comes within you and things are not moving you, you're living in that peace. You're living in that joy. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know my righteousness is secure. And where Paul would say, you know, to live as Christ, to die as gain, because he knew no matter if I'm in this body, or not in this body. I'm still in the kingdom. I'm still, I'm in heaven regardless. Yep. And so he's not moved by what was happening. And so that's why I think even many of those disciples could live their life even to the death because they were not in fear of death. They were not fear. They were living in the kingdom. That's why they could praise in prisons. That's why they could, you know, uh, <laughs> worship God in the midst of being beat and stoned and, you know, let down, shipwrecked, all the stuff they went through is because the kingdom of God was really legit inside of them and they were living in the kingdom and they were like, you know what, this is it's still the righteous piece. It's still the best life. And God, it just gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just, I was just <laughs> thinking, you know, the power of Thanksgiving yeah. as we come into this, you know, season. You know, one of the things that did happen even after they came here in this country is that the first Thanksgiving was like, you know, the Indians and the Pilgrims sat at the same table. Yep. I think sometimes it's time for us to to to, to realize maybe we need that table again, that yep. table of reconciliation. Whether it's, you know, I mean, I, I realize there was some, there's some tragic things that have happened in history, absolutely, even with the Indians and all this and, and stuff like that 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 went on. And, uh, you know, and so, and, and, and there, there are points where all of us can be blamed for something, but maybe it's time to come to the table of reconciliation mm -hmm. and just partake of a little bit of, of that. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know, even the power of Thanksgiving Post, like you said, you know, we watch the news sometimes. And I, I talked with a reporter one time and he said, you know, here's what, here's, here, here's our philosophy in the news. If it bleeds, it leads. In other words, people glue themselves to bad news because the kingdoms of this world are full of bad news, yep. but the kingdom of God is full of good news yep. and it's full of thanksgiving. And a few Sundays ago, I preached a message we sent out on our message of the month club. By the way, you can sign up for that if you go to my website, our message of the month club. And uh, I, I talked about the scripture, when your heart is overwhelmed, I go to the rock of my salvation. 
But a scripture that has spoke to me over the years that I have to keep coming back to is Psalm 77, where Asaph, who is the chief musician, David's worship leader, if you will, he is in the mully grubs. When your worship leader is <laughs> in the blues, you probably ain't having a good service. But this is what it says in Psalm, in Psalm 77. It said, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hands were stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I Watch this. He's in a bad state of mind when he says this. I remembered God and was troubled. See, I believe there's a lot of people thinking like that right now. I remember God. It was, I com Watch this, though. This is the power. I complained, and my spirit is overwhelmed. Yep. You know, we would just finish the series on, you know, uh, the book of Joshua. But one of the things he warns them about in 1 Corinthians 10 is, he said, don't fall after their same example of unbelief, for they murmured, and they fell in, and snakes came among them. Yep. If, if murmuring creates an environment for snakes to operate, devils to function. Mm -hmm. Just think what thanksgiving and worship will do. It gives God the power. So he says, I complained that my spirit was overwhelmed. We, we meet with people sometimes, and even on our first, we complain about the lines too long. Mm -hmm. uh, we complain about right now, restaurants are, 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 are shutting down early because nobody will work anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, waitresses are taking a bad rap. And I have made it a point in the last several times to just call my waitress over and say, listen, we are thankful for anybody that will work today. Mm -hmm. We understand that you're busy, and I just want you to know that we think you're doing a good job. And leave them a good tip rather than a complaint, yep. because at least they're working. We did that in, in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and, you know, the waitress just stood there, and she tears just began. She said, thank you. Thank you for that. She said, I've been in tears a couple times today because... You know, we just, people are so rude. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, 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 we get, we, we, we join conversations over how bad we think this is, how bad we think that is, until we sit around. And even if you talk about COVID or you talk about politics or you talk about world events, if you sit there and complain, it will overwhelm your spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes stuff you can do nothing about. If you can't engage it, I always say, don't engage a battle where there's no spoil. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes it's like what they want you to think about the situation. Mm -hmm. I, I think I was thinking even as I was teaching last week in the seminar, I thought, you know, the, 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 the older folks before me looked at my generation and we said, boy, this generation is going to hell in a handbasket, except it didn't. We made it. Yeah. And then, see, I get older and I start thinking about that sometimes. And then I, me and my wife were talking on the other night on the porch. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? The truth of this, they thought about that us. And then I start looking about at young people, like younger men like you and like, you know, one of the pastors I just preached for there in Birmingham is 30 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh, uh, yeah. Justin Carrier, shout out for you, my bud. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just was, wasn't even born when I started preaching for his daddy, senior pastor now at Fusion Ministries yep. in Hueytown, Alabama. You owe to yourself to go by and visit that church. But when I start seeing that, I think, you know what? God's got this. Yeah, He does. He's got it in control. And so, you know, I can com com complain to my spirit overwhelms me. And He goes, you know, He goes on to say, You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night, probably the blues. <laughs> I meditate within my heart and my spirit made a diligent search. Watch this. It's just, it's pitiful. It's like a downward spiral. And you can get in these downward spirals and talk mm -hmm. yourself into it. He said, Will the Lord cast off forever? That's what a lot of people think right now. And will he be favorable? No more. Jesus stood up in the day of Roman occupation of great chaos and said, he has sent me to declare the year of the favor of God. Has his mercy ceased forever? Yep. Has his promise failed forevermore? We start accusing God of being vacant and merciless and not being there and yada, yada. Has God forgotten to be gracious in the anger and shut up his tender mercies? But here's where it shifts. And he said, but this is my trouble. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. And I think about the arm and hand of bacon soda box where God rolls up his sleeve and makes bare his holy arm. He said, I will, in other words, he shifts what his focus is on. Mm -hmm. And he says, I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. We need to put some worship music on. Get the Word of God playing in the background. You know, mm -hmm. get your heart full of some good news. Your way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. When he shifts, he starts saying, your way is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people. 
the sons of Jacob. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you. They were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way is in the sea. Your path in the great waters and your footsteps were not known. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And he's alluding to, let me go back and remember how God has constantly delivered us. Yeah. Somebody's listening to me right now, and you need to go back and remember the past miracles. Mm -hmm. You're discouraged. You're thinking this thing's never going to come to an end, but I will remember the years of the right hand. It's Thanksgiving. It's time to shift what we focus on. And when he started to shift what he focused on, started to talk differently, it may not have changed the circumstances, but it changes your perception of it. But it also lets an opportunity, like I said, if murmuring creates an environment for snakes, Thanksgiving creates an environment for God to roll up his sleeve and says, what do you think of that? Yeah. And so, you know, and you would think, Jeremy, and I'm going to give it back to you about mm -hmm. preaching a little bit here, but, you know, I was thinking about how uh, he said, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. You, you think about the children of Israel and you think, you know what, I think, if I would have seen God open a red sea up mm -hmm. and we cross over on dry land and then the same sea that saved you closes behind your enemy, I, I think it, I, I might have, wouldn't it think you think it all on you? God must be for us. <laughs> See, that's what he's trying to remind them of here. Yep. You, 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 you led your people through the great path of the water. Mm -hmm. When manna fell in the backyard, you would think God must be for us. Yeah. When I get up in the morning and there is a pillar of a cloud that's given me coolness in the desert, you would think it would dawn on them. God is for us. When you get to nighttime and a pillar of fire is going up from the tabernacle, you would think it would dawn on them. God must be for us. When you got up every morning and there's fresh manna in the backyard, you'd have to think God must be for us. How quickly we forget the times God did come through, and we can seemingly only emphasize. I've had to deal with this in my own mm -hmm. mind because as I've ha handled crises and tragedy through this season, it's almost at times really overwhelmed mm -hmm. me. My heart was overwhelmed mm -hmm. because I've had to deal with you know people's. When you know a lot of people yeah. like we do, there's a tragedy somewhere that's always happening. But I, and it seems like when you get in that moment and you're focused right there, it's like God's not doing anything. Where's His mm -hmm. miracles at? Well, the truth of it is, is you got to go back and look at all the times God did come through for us mm -hmm. and let the thankfulness of your heart begin to resurface where you begin to say, I'm going to remember the years of the right hand of the most. I'm going to talk, of, I'm going to meditate on that. That's what I'm going to put my focus on. And I think in this season of Thanksgiving, it's time to be thankful. Mm -hmm. I've talked a long time on you this know, segment. It's funny too, as you think about the children of Israel, you know, and when Joshua, you know, since we were talking, we've been talking about the jo book of Joshua for several weeks, is that, you know, when he sends in the two, when Joshua sends in the two spies to spy out the land the second time, what really changed their mind about the land was not what they saw. It was the testimony of the harlot, of the harlot. Yeah. Where she said, Same what has taken you so long? Our hearts mounted inside where of us a long time. We, we heard. <laughs> she starts going, we heard about the miracles that God did on that side of Jordan and how he had delivered you from these kings and how he had done these things for you. Uh, we have been sitting here defeated all this time. For 40 years, we have been sitting here defeated in our own hearts because we knew that at some point you're coming across this Jordan and God has given you this land. And I think sometimes we've got, you know, even, even in our church services, we have not heard good news or the reports of the Lord. We have heard how bad we, 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 we echo the report of the world and how bad everything is and how, man, if Jesus don't come back soon and fix everything, we're all just, it's all just over and there's no lifting. You know, so you can't even sometimes even go to church and have your heart lifted up. But I want to say there is a Joshua, there's always a Joshua and a Caleb. God always has some people that's got the word and they've got some testimony to begin to, when I, I think about, like we said about when they came across that Jordan, the first thing God, they, the Joshua does is he circumcises them. On that, after they cross, so they're in the enemy's land. And it says that the kings of that land had witnessed the pulling back of the, of the Jordan 
and they, they're witnessing, and, and, and you would think, you know, the most strategic time for those kings to attack if they wanted to attack the children of Israel and say, let's put an end to this, is when they were recovering from their circumcision. Yep. But it says in that same scripture that they're, the, the, the men of war that, the, 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 that came out of Egypt, those men died in the wilderness because God wasn't going to bring you in by war. He was going to show you his goodness in this land of promise. They weren't going to have to fight for it. It was going to be the, what God is giving them. I'm going to drive out. These men, these kings that witnessed them come across, they probably witnessed them being circumcised, did not attack at that time because the scripture says their hearts already melted. They already knew they were defeated. They already knew this belonged. They were just holding on to the houses until you got here. Yep. You know, and I think that there needs to be, we need to be reminded again, this, the gospel is the good news. Somebody needs to start proclaiming not what's happening in the world, not be an echo of the bad news, not be an echo of COVID, not be an echo of the economy and of, you know, political unrest and everything else. But we need to be a voice of the, of the Holy Spirit and begin to proclaim God has done great things. He has brought, and he has brought us a mighty long way and begin to remind people of all the things of his goodness, of what he's done. Like Asa said, you need to remember some things of what God has done in your past, what the times where it looked like, you know, you, you, what, you know, you didn't know how you was going to make it through this situation. Yet you come out on the other side and you go, man, that was no, that was no doubt something God did. I remember there are times even in my, since I've been married with my wife, and we've seen God move in our, in our, our lives. And, and, you know, I remember I don't get moved easily anyway. You know, I'm kind of just like my, my personality's here. My wife, sometimes she's up here because she's thinking about all the, fu- she's, she's been trained to think about the future and the possibilities of all things. And so, uh, there were many times where she thought the situation we were in was going to be the end of the story. And I said, that ain't it. It'd be, everything's going to be fine. You're going to see. And she would think, you know, you're just saying that just to calm me down. I said, no, I'm telling you, I know how good God is. You know, even when, you know, like presidential stuff, we get a new president comes along and we think the world's going to fall apart with this one. But we'll be eight years or we'll be four years from now and it'll be all right. We'll still be here. God's still in control. God's still, because it's not, our lives are not controlled by those things. Our lives are still in the hands of God. If deflation and prices go up, God is still good enough to bless us that we'll be able to afford to get back because he's that good of a God. He is our, the kingdom of God needs to be within us. And when it's in us, then what happens in the world does not move us. We begin to be the answers. We begin to be the peacemakers. We begin to be the voice that begins to be sound doctrine. It gives people some faith. It gives people some hope. We start. It, it is. It has to be the children of God and the sons of God that begin to speak good news, speak the gospel, so that people can hear something because they're surrounded by stuff that sounds bad. You know, I heard there's a song that says, "When I think, you know, when it seems like I'm surrounded." I need to realize what I'm really surrounded by is you. You know, when, 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 uh, I believe it was, uh, Elijah, Elisha was in a house and it said, his servant said, you know, you need to look out here. We are surrounded by an army. They have come to take us. They have come to kill us. And, uh, I think I, 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 Elisha says, you didn't see right. You need to go look again. And when he looked out, he saw the armies of God was surrounding the armies. And there was a bigger army out there <laughs> that was for them and not against them. And I think we need to start hearing some stories like that that begins to remind us of just how good God is, how much he's for us and not against us. How it, when it seems like we're surrounded by problems, there is a bigger God that surrounds the problems and engulfs the problems. He takes our problems away. He's got us. He's got, he's got, he, again, he brings them into a land that's flowing with milk and honey. That's got some abundance to it. And while we think there's an abundance of problems, there is an abundance of heaven that we need to be awakened to and realize, man, the kingdom of God is in us. It's among us. It's there's some, we can have some righteousness because the righteousness uh, issue has been settled by the blood of Jesus. I can have some joy in this life and stop just fretting and worrying about everything's going on and start enjoying Enjoying the journey, enjoying our families, enjoy, you know, when we got to lockdown and we were all quarantined, uh, you know, people were losing their mind over stuff. I was enjoying it because I was locked up with my family. I, I like my family. Yeah. I enjoy being around them. I wish we'd go, I kind of wish sometimes we'd go back and get a quarantine at least every couple of months just so I could be locked up with them people again. I love being around them. I have a good time with my family. I've got some joy in my house. I've got some peace in my house. And the reason why is because the kingdom of God is operating in my house. We turned off the news. I started turning off Facebook because those things are, yep, those yep. things are become thieves to people's really peace of mind. It's why we have become divided while we're fighting people because we read something on Facebook that ain't even true half the time. 
It's, and then we blow it out of proportion instead of putting our focus on the things that God is doing in the midst of what can be bad. I mean, God, if you don't like the president, stop complaining about it. Pray for him. Because yep. all it takes is an encounter with the Holy Ghost that turns this country around completely and changes the world. It just takes the power of the Holy Spirit just yep. operating and the kingdom coming within us and giving thanks for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's power and thankfulness, yeah. you know, and that's 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 the whole thing. I mean, all through the scriptures, there's such power and praise. You know, when you see David, who wrote Psalm after Psalm after Psalm, and you know, for the Lord is good, for His mercy endures and forever. forever. Uh, you know, uh, and you you see the power of thanksgiving, not just in, uh, you know, just like I'm not just talking about the dinner table, but the this is the Thanksgiving season. Yeah. So when we start to think, you know, I said so recently, we 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 live in the culture where They've only ever seen this snapshot of what it's like now. And to us, we think it's great tribulation when one of our three cars didn't run right. Yeah. I, I talked about how I was at an airport, you know, and the flight was canceled and and I was belly aching and growling, you know, and then I thought, you know, by the time I got to the curb, I had with the device on my side booked an Uber, a hotel, and my flight back home the next day. And I thought, this is first world program problems. Mm -hmm. Instead of being growling, I ought to just thank God that I live in a culture where this is this good. Yeah, there's a pandemic, but you know, the truth of it is we never lived in uh, the Black Plague. We yeah. never lived in uh, smallpox. We never lived in polio. Those are all stuff that, you know, World War One and Two. Don't, that, no doubt people thought this is the end, but it was not the end. Uh -huh. there was, and we live in a day when I, we're, this too will pass. Yep. And before it passes, if, if you can't praise him because of what he's done, praise him on credit, praise him for what he's going to yeah. do. And remember, this is the day the Lord has made. Yep, I will rejoice. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Yep. <laughs> and that, like, that just has to have some mind yep. change sometimes yep. of just how we really think and, and perceive life. This yep. is the day the Lord's a day. Yep. And if he made it, he made it for me to bless me. Yep. I'm going to rejoice and be glad yep. in this day. Well, we're about out of time, so we want to wish you happy Thanksgiving from our ministry to yours and enjoy your yep. families. Let it be a time of reconciliation. If you'd like to sow into this ministry to help us continue to take the gospel around the globe, please uh, do it by, you could just scan the, the little icon that'll come on the screen. You can give that way. You can go to lynnhiles.com. There is a link there where you can give via credit card or or, uh, or or debit card. You can also set up a monthly debit if you'd like to become a monthly partner. We need your partnership. You can send a check or money order to the address that'll come on the screen, or you can call the number that's on the screen and someone will take your call and receive your offering that way. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. I am excited to announce the release of my latest book titled The Great I Am. In this book, we will explore the seven times in the Gospel of John that Jesus says, I am. When he uses that phrase, it is always in contrast to something from the Old Covenant. For instance, they thought Moses and the law was the door into the sheepfold, but Jesus said to them, I am the door. They thought that Israel was the true vine, but Jesus said to them, I am the vine, you are the branches. As you read the pages of this book, you will discover that Jesus removed the covenant of death and replaced it with the covenant of life. Get your copy of the book, The Great I Am, today.